If you ask me what my favorite hockey trivia fact is, it's this. Wayne Gretzky is the all-time leader in NHL points, which is calculated as total goals plus total assists. If you subtract all 894 of Gretzky's goals from his point totals, Wayne Gretzky is still the all-time leader in NHL points. Basically, Gretzky is so good that had he never scored a goal, he would still have more total points than any other NHLer ever. In sports, it's rare you come across this type of dominance. An athlete who is just so head and shoulders above everyone else that it silences any and all doubts about who's best. I don't know if there's ever been a climber who's been this far above everyone else until Yanya Garnbrandt came along. Over the past five years, Yanya has shown a level of dominance that's completely unprecedented on the climbing scene. She's so good that she sometimes seems transcendental. It's like she's on a different level and the routes just aren't hard enough for her. Along the way, Yanya's developed her own distinct style, one that's basically tailor-made to competitions, and that has allowed her to be so dominant even in an increasingly competitive field. This is my breakdown of the greatest competition climber that the sport has ever seen. This is the uniqueness of Yanya Garbrandt. Hey guys, welcome back to Climbing Styles, where we look at some of the best climbers in the world to try to find what makes them so good. Today, we're going to analyze one of the most incredible climbers we've ever seen in Ganya Garnbrandt. Ever since she burst onto the scene in 2016, Ganya has been the name in women's competition climbing. She's won in every discipline, at every level, so comfortably and so consistently that it's completely unprecedented. What's more, the raw numbers like her 31 gold medals don't even tell the full story. When you actually watch her compete, it's somehow more impressive. She doesn't just win competitions, she absolutely runs away with them, flashing boulders and cruising routes in a way that's almost rude to her competitors. She does it in every discipline too. This is maybe the most impressive thing to me about Yanya. Climbing has traditionally been a game of specialists. Those with the stamina and finesse to excel on lead walls usually lack the raw power that you need for bouldering. The best boulderers don't have enough stamina to place well on lead. Yanya cruises both. It was like she was built in a lab and specifically raised to be a competition climber. So how does she manage to do this? Obviously she does just about everything well, but there are three things in particular that Yanya does that I want to highlight. Her conditioning, her coordination, and her commitment. First, let's talk about her conditioning. In broad strokes, there are three categories of conditioning you can train for in climbing. Power, endurance, and power endurance. Power is your absolute max. A climber like Yoshiyuki Ogata has insane max power. Endurance is your long burn cardio. Kim Jain in particular is known for this. In the middle between the two is power endurance. Your ability to pull through 12 to 25 hard moves in sequence without getting pumped out. For competition climbing, I would say power endurance is what's most important. It allows you to stay fresh on lead walls that usually have at least one half decent rest built in, while still having enough raw strength for the boulders. Yanya's power endurance is so far above everyone else that it's almost ridiculous. Obviously, she has incredible strength to throw moves like this on the boulder wall, but what's maybe more impressive is how well she translates this to leading. In fact, it's almost weird to see where her endurance comes from. It's not like she's Laura Rigora where her gas tank is endless and you just get the feeling that she could hang onto the route indefinitely. In fact, on long, pumpy lead walls, we do sometimes see Yanya come off earlier than normal. Instead, it's almost like her max strength is just so much higher than everyone else that she doesn't get tired in the same way that they do. Even though her endurance might not be the best, her power endurance is so high that the moves just aren't hard enough to pump her out. You saw this in Xiamen 2019, where she climbed the entire route without taking any significant rest and would have won handily if not for an unfortunate mistake on the final move. Now, this mistake was such a surprise because Yanya is usually so good at these coordination moves. Coordination is probably what she's known best for and it's what allows her to pull these wild jumps and the ever-famed Yanya swing. This coordination goes hand in hand with her power as she's able to latch holds and stick positions that other climbers can't. Her combination of coordination and power isn't just better than everyone else. It's worlds above the rest of the field in a way that almost seems unfair. To see what I mean, check out Women's 2 from Myrigan 2021. 
Here's a collection of the best boulders in the world, including Akio Noguchi, Orianne Bertone, and Natalia Grossman trying this tricky panel move. Some of them figure it out, sure, but it takes a few throws. Now, look at Yanya try. I mean, what even was that? She didn't even use the zone. She just held on, tapped the opposite wall with her foot, and finished flashing the route. Even this last move shows how good she is dynamically. Look at how she redirects her body to keep her power in the right toe, locking her in place to catch that final hold. Yanya does a lot of things right on these moves, but in particular, I think her adjustments are what really sets her apart. A lot of climbers get behind themselves on coordination sequences, especially ones that require multiple moves, but Yanya is really good at making mid-air adjustments so she's always in the right place. For an example of this, look at Furtaba Ito try this boulder from the 2019 Adidas Rockstars. In slow motion, you can see that by the time her left hand comes up to catch the zone, her hips are already back and she's already falling. By comparison, look at Yanya on the same problem. She leads with the left hand, getting it there quickly, and it helps her to stick the move. Now, her coordination is otherworldly, but it's not actually what I think makes Yanya most unique. We've seen other climbers with insane coordination before. What sets Yanya apart, to me, is her commitment. Commitment is less of a skill and more of what I would call a mindset. It's the result of Yanya's insane combination of strength and coordination, and it's what allows her to stand so far above the rest of the field. Even when faced with confusing beta and big moves, she almost always throws with 100% conviction. She doesn't always stick the move, but she almost always learns something from the route, and she's very good at downloading this beta and using it for the next go. Women's 3 at Myrigan is a good example of this. After a wonky start, the climbers found themselves faced with this delicate step over. Now, several climbers, including Akio, read this backwards and ended up with their feet crossed, which was a tough position to get out of. Even after swapping their feet back, athletes were here, faced with a confusing jump into a combo sloper and left hand press. You can see Natalia's confusion as she tries to figure it out here, and even when she does go for it, it's a bit of a half attempt. It's the same with Oriane. She throws, sure, but it's pretty delicate. You can see the hesitation in them, and it's almost as if they're not really expecting to stick the next move. Yanya always expects to stick it. On her first try, she winds up with her feet crossed. Instead of jumping down or wasting time trying to fix it, she just throws and comes insanely close to sticking the move. Next time, she's got the beta and she's ready to go. Again, just look at the confidence that she throws into these holds with. She fully expects to stick the move, and because of that, she has more body tension, more power, and a higher chance of actually making it. Above everything else, I think this commitment is what stands out to me. Yanya is never afraid to try a crazy throw or a wild swing, and when she does, she's almost always expecting to make it stick. Even when it doesn't, it helps her learn and grow so she can get it next time, and it's this raw confidence and belief in herself that has allowed her to stand head and shoulders above everyone else on the competition scene. Like I said in the intro, there are levels of dominance in sports. We've seen dominant climbers before who have done things that no one else could do. I have an entire series about them. Compared to the competition at her time though, we've never seen someone as dominant as Yanya Garnbrett. She is the runaway best climber on the planet to the point where it's not even a conversation and there's no one in terms of overall skill who is really on her level. There was no better statement of this to me than the Olympics. With all the pressure in the world on her, in an event where other top athletes failed to show up, she completely stole the show using her power, timing, and commitment to lock up the sport's inaugural gold medal. I want to say that it was a once in a lifetime performance, but it felt like more than that. It felt like a once in an ever showing from Yanya. Like, I'm sure we'll see other great climbers who will have great competitions and incredible seasons, but I don't know if we'll ever see something like Yanya's five year reign over every discipline in climbing capped with a masterful performance to win the biggest prize that the sport has ever seen. It's something that I don't see ever being repeated, something that will always be individually hers, and that is the uniqueness of Yanya and Garbrett.
All right, guys, that is everything for today. Let me know in the comments, what do you think makes the Anya so special? And who do you want to see featured on Climbing Styles? I'm always happy to take your suggestions. Thank you so much, as always, for watching, and I will see you next time.